In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Well, once again, welcome. So glad you joined us today. We hope that today will be a blessing for you because today we have a gift for you. A gift that you can, that can make a lasting and profound difference in your life. And the gift doesn't require you to shop. You don't have to go on to any website. There's no subscription needed, no membership fees. Uh, it, it's not going to require you to do anything that's uh, any kind of heroic self-improvement plan. You're, you're not going to have to lose any weight. You don't need to even speak, but only to receive. With this gift, your problems may remain, but maybe you will be changed. And life may still seem uncertain, but you'll always be secure. This gift has been known to end the painful search for the meaning and purpose of life. This gift can remold you from the inside out. This gift is called a blessing. And we often think of blessing as something, uh, well, we do before a meal. But a blessing is more than a prayer and a thanks to God. A blessing has to do with hearing from God, hearing into our hearts, the gift of His love and His favor. Not for what we do for Him, but for who we are. This gift is that we see Jesus receive from God, his heavenly Father. If Jesus needed this gift, then, well, then how much more will we need? In Matthew's biography of Jesus is the account of God's blessing for Jesus. Look with me at Matthew three sixteen through 17. It says, After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Now, the amazing thing about this blessing is, is, is the timing of it. See, God says this about Jesus before he's ever preached a sermon, be, before he's healed anyone, uh, he's, he's not saved anyone of their sins. He's, he's not debated the religious scholars or, or boldly confronted those who uh, oppress the downtrodden or it announced the advance of the kingdom of God. At this point, Jesus has no followers, no memorable speeches, and nothing much to show for his 30 years on earth. If Jesus were with us today in his earthly ministry, this meant that the blessing came to Jesus when he had nothing to put on his resume. He had no employees, no legacy, nothing to Google, nothing to post on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, no professional networks on LinkedIn, no stock portfolio to admire, yet God says, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on here? is we, 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 we don't understand a blessing. To bless means to hold someone in high regard and adding value to his or her life. When we sing our worship songs, uh, and I, I, it makes me think of bless the Lord, O oh my soul, because we're talking about blessing. We're holding God in high regard and adding offering of our soul to God to say good things about God. In this passage, God says good things about Jesus for who he is, not for what he's done. Jesus' identity was not a status to achieve, but a, a gift to receive. And the same is true for you. Do you know that even before you, were, you made a sound, even before you spoke a sentence, or even before you earned your first dollar, God loved you. God loves you right now and wants to bless you with his love. All of us who are weary and can't stop striving, cease our proving and listen to what is true about you. You are a child of God, 
and a person of worth, or as we say around here, a cog pal. Today I urge you and invite you to, that, to, Jesus be, let you to let Jesus be your Savior so that you can rest in this grace-filled gift of identity. Today is the time we have together. We, in the name of Jesus, we want everyone to be blessed. We want to invite you to rest in God's love and favor for you. Now, blessings go two ways. By this, I mean when we do something for others, we're, we're blessed too. Many of you know that one of the things our church was known for was our, our food. I think that's probably why I was appointed here, because I, I know something about food. But each week we serve food to over 300 people, some of whom may not eat unless we provided it. And when we shut down due to the virus, our hearts broke for our friends who we shared meals with. I mean, we tried doing meals to go, but, you know, uh, people were gathering in the parking lot waiting for their meal, and there was no social distancing, no masks. And we did not want to put anyone at risk. And after all, the reason we were doing the food in the first place was because we love people. Now we're putting them at risk, so we knew we had to stop. And this caused your, your pastor many sleepless nights and maybe even a few tears shed. So how do we help others without putting them at risk? And as I spoke this problem one Wednesday evening to the very few that were here at the time to, to help uh, videotape this, um, our Wednesday night tech guy, Andy, says, well, why can't we take the meals to them? An idea was born. So we started making to-go meals on Wednesday evenings and delivering them to people into the, in the park, at the library, at the bus stop, or, or just walking down the street. And what a blessing it has been. I've invited Sarah to share a little bit about this, uh, this ministry that we do. She is uh, not only our director of facilities around here, but she is also our, our REACH team leader. So, Sarah, share with us. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah, and as you know, I clean up around here, and I am the director of our REACH ministries. And during this COVID time, what we've been doing on Wednesday nights is kind of what we were doing of serving the homeless, only instead of having people gather here, we um, safely make their dinner, put it into go boxes, and then bring it out to them. And let me tell you, it has been a ball. And uh, Jesus told us, uh, when I was hungry, you fed me. And so that's what we're trying to do, is to just continue to serve people with food, which is always good. And uh, the blessings just come and come and come in different ways. So, Thank you, Sarah. It's a blessing. Now, we also know that there were people in our congregation that may be in need. So, on Saturdays, we started making up bags and boxes of groceries that could be picked up, or in some cases, delivered to those who can't pick up. And this has been a blessing. And to not only them, but to us as well. And, and, and uh, I've asked... Jamie to share a little bit because she has been part of that ministry since it started. So, Jamie, please share with us. Um, God has blessed us with so many different companies that have an abundance of food that they're not able to use, and they donate it to us. And we have single parents, we have servers who lost their jobs and lost their hours, different people with different issues for different reasons. We've been able to reach out to some people, we've been able to to um, get in touch with them through the give help get, get help give help um, on our website um, different ways to communicate with people that are in need and on Saturdays we've been able to um, put bags of groceries boxes and stuff together for them of the food that we receive through donations and we either go deliver it to them if they're not able to pick it up and it's been such a blessing um, to be a part of that and blessing for them and um, 
so many other people. Thank you, Jamie, for sharing. Um, she's kind of my favorite, I'm just saying. But I want to read an email I received from a lady whose family we have been helping with groceries. And she said, Hello, Pastor. I'm glad to hear you're taking care of yourself and your family. We certainly miss seeing you, but we're thankful to still be able to read your updates and share the Word of God with you. And I just wanted to take a little time aside and thank you again for the food you have been so graciously allowing us to have. It's gotten us all through these trying and difficult times, and we're still looking forward to receiving food tomorrow as well. There are times when we get food from other sources if the need arises, but none compare to the beautiful and thoroughly healthy foods that Grace Church gives. Always fresh, always beautifully complementary to one another. We are more than grateful. We consider ourselves blessed to be members of Grace Church. Speaking of which, I'd like to know if you would consider allowing me to do what a little of what I call service work. May I please volunteer my time to do something for Grace? I often see various bits of trash in front of Grace on Edison Avenue. Maybe someone could loan me a, a grabber and a few bags, and I could ride along Edison and Grand twice a day and pick up whatever trash I see. I would feel good that I'm actually contributing to Grace, and I'm sure the community could use a boost. Please let me know if you could consider this. I, I don't want anything. I just want to help. This wonderful lady said ride up and down along in front of the church because she's confined to a wheelchair. What a blessing. Children have been blessed recently as well. For the first time in uh, three going on four years that I have been here, we had a vacation Bible school. Now, it was virtual, online, but uh, I, I've asked Jen Dalton, our children's department director, to share a little bit about Vacation Bible School. Jen? Hi, everyone. It's Jen from the children's department here at the central campus of Grace Church. And I just wanted to share uh, some blessings with you that we've seen this summer. Even though we can't be together, we were able to host a virtual VBS alongside the other campuses of, of Grace Church. And we had some great participation from our families here. We had eight families that included 13 children that were able to watch live and participate in the activities. And it was so much fun. We heard stories of how Jesus is working in our life and how it is so important to trust him. So the children participated. We're including some photos for you to see. There were some great activities. We made family prayer journals, necklaces, frisbees, and we even had some fun activities like trust falls and some silly games with flour. So I just wanted to thank you all again for participating and sharing this uh, great, great activity with us. VBS was amazing this year, even though it looked a little bit different. So thank you again. I hope you all are doing well and hopefully we'll get to see you soon. Well, thank you, Jen. So glad that uh, the kids had a great time, and it sounds like uh, they learned a little bit about Jesus, too. Now, also during this time, I've shared with you how much I, I miss going to the prison uh, with the Kairos Prison Ministry. That has not stopped me, though, from reaching out to our friends that are in county facilities, one of which asked me to share what he wrote. So here's his email he had sent. Dear friends at Grace Church, Hi, it's me, Samuel. Did you know that Samuel means heard from God in Greek? <laughs> How funny. Think that God is speaking to me lately on this topic. You're never alone, and you can feel at peace, and I'm going through a dark spot in my life, but because of the hope, grace, church, and God has given me to rise above it, I know that I'm not alone. I sit in this cell, these four walls daily, and reflect on who I was, and what I've done, and nothing can compare to who God has made each and every one of us to be. In his words, he says we are all made to be perfect, unblemished kings and queens, princes and princesses. God loves us deeply. Sometimes it takes darkness to see light. It takes darkness to see sobriety. 
uh, addiction to see cleanliness, the sinner to see the saint. I'm trying to get there inside myself right now, and I won't give up because of four words my pastor told me long ago. Stay strong and know you are never alone. In a cell, in a car, in a church, in a home, anywhere we can feel so very alone, but if we seek him, we will find him. He will find us. Jeremiah 29, 11 uh, tells us that the plans to prosper and to bring us up out of the abandoned places. And I believe addiction has a lot to do with the pain of abandonment and also the pain from codependency. Funny how all the things when, when all we need is God. And as God, I'm going to end this with a prayer. God reached the lost inside and outside these cells. And these personal hells, walls can form in the heart, and I ask that you break them down, penetrate the darkness, and lift their souls and mine high up to you, your throne of glory. Allow us to stay humble and, to, and meek and to be guided by you to know that we are never alone. And we ask this to break the chains from the devil and be free of all his lies. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. My Grace family, I love you guys. Miss you guys to the fullest. And I'm asking you guys to write me uh, words of strength and wisdom by mail if you have the time. And I pray not for me, but for others because I may not get mail like I want or what I want. And when I want, but I, I will always know God is on, your, on his own time. Signed, your brother in the Lord, Sam Burnham. And that's not all. Our recovery ministries have just been taking off like crazy. We've seen some innovative ways that they're doing things. And I've invited uh, Rochelle, our director of uh, recovery ministries, to tell us a little bit about that. Hey guys, Rochelle here. I'm the director of recovery ministries here at the Fort Myers campus. And I get to talk to a minute about the blessings that are that we're seeing happen at Choose Recovery, you know. Um, and so we've still been meeting. We've just found ways to do it online. So right here on the Facebook page on Monday nights, we gather together and we have worship and a lesson or a testimony. And then we all get together in the comment section and we chime in. It's like we're having fellowship with each other during service. And we also um, are meeting on Friday nights through the Cape Coral Campus Facebook page. And, and we have found ways to add more meetings in. So each week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 o'clock in a program called Zoom, we are actually able to log in and have recovery meetings where we actually get to look at a computer screen with other people's faces and interact and and really have uh, growing recovery. And we are seeing people from all over jumping in in these recovery Zoom groups. We got people from Seattle, Washington, from Indiana, Tampa, from all over. It's really amazing to, to be able to grow in our, in our recovery with each other. And so, um, you know, it's really been such a blessing to meet new people that have never ever stepped foot in an in-person recovery meeting but we are still able to reach them and they're able to find recovery through online services. You know, we've had a couple of people call up to the church and we referred them to online and, and they're coming to the meetings. And it's such a blessing to be able to be part of lives being transformed, to, be, to see people find hope that even though they're stuck in their homes right now, they can still be connected with recovery and with each other. And also, it's pretty cool because out of this, our, um, our home group team, our team that kind of puts the service together, is really growing in relationship with each other. Um, anybody's invited, but at 6 o'clock on Monday nights, we get together before the service starts so that we can chit-chat with each other, um, tell each other what's going on, check out, um, check out life. I mean, and it's been pretty cool to be able to do that. And we get to pray for everyone that's going to be joining on Monday nights. And so it's been an amazing blessing to bond and connect with other people, even during this time of COVID-19. Thank you, Rochelle. It's such a blessing to hear what God is doing and how he's blessing people, even in this time. The blessings of God, the deepest longing of every human heart, Every person needs to know they are loved by God. And today, wherever you are, 
the altar of blessing is open to you. So today, we're, I, I hope we have provided an opportunity for you to receive God's blessing. One of the oldest blessings found in the Bible is from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. And archaeologists have found jewelry with this text inscribed on it, dating back as far as the 7th century B.C. Shortly after uh, Israelites were freed from the slavery of, in Egypt, God gave Moses these words for his brother Aaron to use to bless God's people. Numbers 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. Be gracious to you, and the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God wrote this prayer for us because he knew the desire of our heart. We need to know that we are loved by God. We need uh, God to keep, uh, keep us, meaning to guard our lives and to keep close to him. And we long to see and know God face to face so that we may experience his grace. And we, we long to see and know God face to face also that we may experience his peace, meaning well-being. And many of you may have heard the song, The Blessing, in these days uh, of disease and division, when our future may seem unclear. We're often weary and exhausted. But I ask you to receive the blessing of God. The lyrics of this song. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations, your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you and all around you and within you. He is with you. He's with you. In the morning, in the evening, in the coming, and in your going, in your weeping and in your rejoicing, he is for you. He is with you. Amen. Now, one of the things where we know that Christ is with us because he said he would be is through Holy Communion. You see, on the night that Jesus was betrayed by one of his own, he had dinner one last time with his friends, his disciples. After supper, he took some bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, and take and eat this. This is my body, which will be broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and he gave it to them and said, drink all of this. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. When we celebrate Holy Communion together, when we partake of the bread and the cup, it's not just about getting a little snack. No, it's much, much more. When we eat, whatever we eat becomes part of us. Helps a our muscles to grow, our, our bones to get stronger, and maybe, like some of us, maybe to fill out a little bit more and have to buy new clothes. But one thing I know for certain, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and when we truly examine ourselves, and when we ask for forgiveness for the things where we have fallen short, and we partake of His body, and his blood, Christ becomes part of us. What a blessing that is. So I invite you at home right now. Hopefully you got yourself some bread. And it doesn't have to be any kind of different bread. It doesn't have to be anything special. It doesn't have to be the same Jesus used or what I'm using here today. But take a piece of bread. 
And you can dip it in your cup. And then take it to yourself. Well, Father, what a blessing. What a blessing you have given us. Not only do you love us be, before we do a thing, you love us right where we are, no matter where we are, no matter what we've done. And Lord, you want to bless us. You want to let us know of your love for us. Your love that was so strong that you sent even your son to die on a cross for us. Not those of us that are here at church or watching this service, but everyone, no matter where they were. To those that are hungry, to those that are in recovery to those that are in a jail cell or a prison cell. Lord, you love us. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for the blessing that we have received. Lord, you tell us who we are. You tell us that we are children of God and persons of worth. Thank you. And it's in your name we pray.